All right, folks, welcome to another edition of Lid Tips. In Lid Tips, we talk about or discuss topics of interest to ham radio or amateur radio operators. In this particular episode, we discuss Stan again and Stan's desire to get a nano VNA. We're going to talk about why he wants one, what he's going to do with it, and then we're going to help him make a choice as to which one's the best choice for him. If that sounds like something you're interested in or something you want to watch, why don't you do yourself a favor, go grab a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. Oh, before we do, I did want to say if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up or subscribe. Leave a comment below with any suggestions, recommendations, questions, or comments in general, and I'll do my best to respond. We've also added a Patreon account, so now you have the opportunity to support the channel that way if you'd like. Anyhow, that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to take a moment to thank our newest patron, Evan Hartman. Thanks a lot, Evan. I really appreciate it. All right, folks, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk a little bit about Stan and his desire to get an NOVNA. Now, I wanted to provide a little bit of background on Stan. Who is Stan? Uh, Stan's a new ham, and uh, he recently passed his general and bought a Zygu G90. Uh, Stan also owns a Baofeng with a fake Nagoya antenna. That has no bearing on this video and doesn't play into the conversation at all, but I thought I'd just include it. Uh, Stan is frugal and he likes to save a buck, so in that manner, he's like a lot of us. He's always looking for a good deal or a good opportunity. Uh, Stan is ready to step up his game, and he's always ready to step up his game. He wants to take things to the max, no limit Stan. And uh, he likes to, he has uh, gas, right? Uh, gear acquisition syndrome. He likes to buy stuff. Um, the last one, Stan's emotional. So Stan generally will make decisions based off of how he's feeling. He doesn't look at things objectively and think things through. And uh, he often turns to me and some other, other hams for advice, which is a good thing. Um, and we try to help Stan out the best we can. Uh, Stan doesn't always listen, but uh, nobody does, do they? Let's so see. Stan, he called me up and he said, hey, I want to get a nano VNA. And uh, I said, well, why? What are you looking to do? And uh, he says, they're cheap, bro. They're cheap. And uh, that plays into him being, uh, I guess, frugal being the right word. And um, he's right. They are relatively inexpensive and you get a lot of capability with a nano VNA. Um, and they look cool. You know, he's like, hey, I think they're cool. I think they look cool. I, I, I want to use one. They're easy to carry around, and uh, as we mentioned, they're feature-rich. So, um, you know, Stan's making a compelling case as to why he should get a Nano VNA. Uh, here, and we'll talk about this model in a little bit, um, is what I call the Gecko VNA. Um, we don't advise people to buy these, and we'll talk about that as we get in further down in the, in the conversation. So, um, you know, talking to Stan, I said, you know, nano VNAs, they're great for doing antenna analysis. Um, they, they work really well. Um, they work with PC software. Uh, that's where I think these things really shine. Uh, I have trouble reading the smaller screen, especially when outside. Um, so I often use a laptop or something like that, or at home, I'll hook it to my home PC to do some antenna analysis. Um, and they're very quite capable. So uh, they're... I, re I recommend the Nano VNA, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, they're a learning tool that's accessible. When I bought the Nano VNA, I didn't know how to use it. Um, now I do, and uh, I've learned a lot in that journey of learning how to use it. So um, for anybody who's open to learning, it it's a great way to learn. Um, and they've also become very popular. Popular uh, when, you when you talk about Nano VNAs, everybody's like, oh yeah, I got one. Um, when we were going to ham fests, uh, last year I would go and, and many folks would often be raffling off nano VNAs or they were being sold. Um, they, they've really made a splash in the, in the ham or amateur radio community. Uh, one thing I will say, my personal opinion is that these are not designed for hams. These are designed more for people who are into electronics, um, and they wanted something that they could get, uh, relatively inexpensive to add to their electronic shack and do some tests. It just so happens that some of their functionality translates into the ham space very well. And, uh, they're open source because they're open source. You get lots of community, uh, involvement. Uh, you have people who might write a custom firmware or an application or make recommendations for changes, uh, even code changes to the nano VNA to the software. Um, that uh, are, are quite handy, and uh, we like open source projects at the Smoke and Ape Shack. 
So with the nano VNA, there's some challenges too. Um, it's not all uh, unicorns and sunshine, or maybe I should say unicorns and rainbows. Um, they're not plug and play and they're complex. Uh, there, there's a little bit of a learning curve in how to use these things. And uh, one of my favorite stories is somebody got a nano VNA, they opened it up, they said they took a look at it, played around with it for 10 minutes and put it right back in the box and gave it to, gave it to somebody. Um, that's certainly an understandable thing. Uh, the nano VNA at first is overwhelming and you do have to do a little bit of homework. Um, they require constant calibration. Uh, I'm calibrating mine all the time, almost every time I use it. Yes, they have a limited number of memories and yes, you can save some calibrations in there. But if you're really doing uh, an in-depth analysis and you're trying to figure something out, you often have to recalibrate for a sweep or for a test. Uh, you can see in this picture here that this case isn't really a case. Uh, one, you have an exposed lithium ion battery um, that's subject to damage, and, and that can be quite dangerous. Um, also, with it being open like that, when you handle this thing with your hands, uh, you can interject interference. And then also, because there's no shielding or limited shielding, I'm sure somebody will come along and say that certain parts are shielded, that um, you can uh, experience interference there as well. Because it's open source, you have clones, copies, and fakes, and uh, many nano VNAs that aren't legit nano VNAs on the market. Sometimes these come with or without a battery, sometimes they come with or without shielding, uh, and sometimes they come with older firmware, um, possibly not even the firmware that should be on them. Um, they're open source, <laughs> and I know that that's a benefit, but it's also a challenge because with them being open source, the opportunity to have uh, errors or mistakes uh, in, in, entered into the environment exist. Um, and then there's no standard pricing model for these, so they're wildly different prices. Um, you may see a nano VNA for $49, um, and it might be legitimate, and you think you're getting a good deal, or you'll see a, a knockoff nano VNA for $89, um, and you think that maybe by paying more, you're, you're ensuring that you're getting a good nano VNA versus a bad nano VNA. So um, no pricing model, uh, being open source and the clones copy and fakes, that's probably the biggest risk in, uh, in, my, in my opinion. Um, also, the ability to learn how to use these is, is pretty steep learning curve. You can see here, there's a number of uh, different models and makes of nano VNA on the market. And as I mentioned, sometimes they come with batteries, without batteries. Sometimes they come with calibration standards and not calibration standards. Sometimes they come with uh, lead cables. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they come with good cables. Sometimes they come with bad cables. Sometimes they come with bad calibration standards. Um, and when you take a look at the models, you really have the original Nano VNA and then the clones of the original Nano VNA. Um, the Nano VNA F, which is a 4-inch model. The um, Nano VNA H4, which is a 4-inch model. Um, and then the new in the center screen, the Nano VNA V2. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about these models and the differences and why you would choose one over another. <laughs> also, I wanted to mention because of their popularity, there's tons of great content out there for you to learn about Nano VNAs. Just look at all these videos here by an expert, an internet expert, where he talks about learning to use a Nano VNA and then actually using a Nano VNA to do some analysis and then also using a Nano VNA uh, with some of the PC software. So let's just do a quick feature comparison uh, on these Nano VNAs. Now I get that this is not every feature that uh, you can get with the Nano VNA, but these are some of the key features that I feel you would use or should use when making a decision to purchase one of these devices. So the first one, as mentioned, is the uh, Nano VNA Gecko or the Gecko VNA. Just don't buy one. There's too many fakes. There's too many issues with these. Just, just skip, pass, look somewhere else. The Nano VNA H is the original Nano VNA, and it's the one that's most often cloned or counterfeit. Uh, depending upon the firmware that you get, and you can also install custom firmwares, you get a range of 50 kilohertz to 900 megahertz, or from 10 kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz. The screen is 2.8 inches, with a resolution of 320 by 240. It has a 650 milliamp hour battery, and uh, it has 101 fixed data points. Now what I wanna do is talk a little bit about these data points. And that's how many individual readings you get across a frequency sweep or a spectrum sweep. The more frequency that you sweep, the further apart your data points are, meaning that you lose the opportunity to see the differences in potential peaks and valleys. You lose granularity. Now, some people will incorrectly say, well, I did 10 sweeps and averaged the data points. So I have 1,100 or 1,010 uh, data points. That's not true. You just have an average of those 101 data points. 
there's software that you can use for this. Uh, Nano VNA Sharp works on Windows. Nano VNA Saver, which is the software that I use or prefer, runs on uh, Macintosh, Windows, and uh, and Linux flavors. And there's some other software. There's a web uh, web client that you can use. There's an Android app version. I haven't really played around with those. I find Nano VNA Sa Saver to be quite capable and uh, is my favorite software to use. Then you have the Nano VNA uh, F, and that was the first 4-inch model that was released, is my understanding. Your range is from 50 uh, kilohertz to 1 gigahertz. The screen is actually 4.3 inches with a resolution of 800 by 480, which is fantastic. The battery is uh, large at 5,000 milliamps, and it has 101 data points, just like the original Nano VNA. And you can use the same software to control it. Then you have the Nano VNA H4, and this is the one I bought about a month ago. I really like it, but uh, I have some reservations, and we'll talk about those. It goes 10 uh, kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz. I don't really do anything above 70 centimeters, so 1.5 gigahertz is kind of overkill for me. But maybe one day I'll get into uh, the FlightAware ADSB, and I'll want to play around at 1.2 gigahertz. It just hasn't happened yet. Uh, the screen is actually 3.9 inches. Uh, the resolution is 320, and I have 48, uh, 4,800. I think it's, it's 480. I must have put an extra zero in there. And the battery is quite capable at 1,950 milliamps. Again, this one has 101 fixed data points, and it's kind of where my issue is. And it uses the same software as the previous Nano VNAs that we discussed. Next is the Nano VNA version 2. Remember, there's two versions of the version 2. 50 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz. Now that's great uh, being able to extend up to 3 gigahertz, but again, it's not something that uh, I need. But I understand that there are some hams that do have some activities that uh, they partake in that, that would be very beneficial to them, which is fantastic. The screen size is a little bit smaller at uh, 2.8, 320 by 240, uh, but it does have the larger battery at 1,950 milliamps. Now this is where this device really shines, in my opinion. It has uh, 201 data points on the device or 1,024 via USB. And that means that you get a much better uh, idea of the frequencies that you're sweeping or working with, how they actually perform. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge uh, increase over the other Nano VNAs. And uh, I'm kind of kicking myself in the pants for not buying one of these. Although it's a little small and I like the larger display, uh, I'll probably end up getting one of these at some point in time. In terms of the software, it uses um, Nano VNA QT, which is a new product that I have not played with. And then Nano VNA Saver has a branch for version 2. I have not used this either. But I'm a fan of Nano VNA Saver, so I can see myself using this in the event that I pick one of these Nano VNAs up. Here we're just going to take a quick look at a couple of different websites and talk about some of the confusion around buying a Nano VNA. So here I went to eBay and I just did a search for Nano VNA and then this is what came up. So here we have uh, Nano VNA Vector Network Analyzer, HF VHF uh, Antenna, 2.8 touchscreen, uh, 50 to 900 megahertz. So this would be the Nano VNA H, the original version, 3969. Uh, that's significantly less than I paid for mine when I got it. So when you look at this, it looks like it does ship with the standards and the cables, which is a good thing. Uh, here is an accurate representation of the size in the hand. Coming over here and... That looks a little bit bigger than it really is, so you have to take some of that uh, into consideration. Now, when I ordered mine, it said it was shipping from the United States, but when I got it in the mail late, it came from China. It had uh, stickers for China Post all over it. Let's go back and take a look. So here's another one from the United States, 43 bucks, 43.80. This would be the white one for $40.70. Uh, here's one that comes in a box. This would be the Nano VNA H. Now, that's the original one. Um, here's Nano VNA H, and then here's the Nano VNA 2 for 8309. And this would be, if it comes with these blue cables, this would be the, uh, the advanced or the high end. Here's $68 for a Nano VNA 2. Here is a white one shipping from the United States for $42. Let's go over here and take a look at uh, Amazon. So here's an upgraded VNA, uh, 10, K, 10 kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz. This is probably the original, the H, with the latest firmware, uh, 3.4 on it, $69. $54, bucks, 39 bucks. 
and uh, you can go down. So here's an NOVA and a F for 100 and, 100 and, uh, 149 dollars. And then here would be this looks like the original one uh, it goes to 1.5 uh, gigahertz. So as you can see, uh, here's another here's the F for 142. There's a, a a wide variety of what you could get or what you could actually purchase. Here is from AliExpress. Here's twenty nine dollars for the uh, for the white one. Uh, twenty eight dollars. Uh, I'd be interested in seeing what you're going to get with that. Uh, thirty two bucks. Uh, Forty six to sixty four. Thirty three to thirty six. This is the kit. Comes with everything there. Here is a here's a version two. Thirty one to seventy three. I wonder what's causing that disparity. Here's the F for 98 to 12. But uh, here's where I would go. As I mentioned earlier, r and Electronics. You can get the original one for $49.95. I get that that's a little bit more, but uh, you're going to get what you're, what you're paying for, and it does have the upgraded firmware. Here's the H4, what I bought, $59.95, uh, 10 uh, kilohertz all the way up to 1.5, the 4-inch touchscreen. He has some test kits on here, and then here is the high-end and the low-end version, too. 65 bucks for the high-end. That doesn't look too bad. Let's take a look. Uh, one thing that they don't do here is put a lot of good pictures up. Well, maybe they do. Here is the uh, the cable set and the calibration standards in the carrying case you get with that. So hopefully uh, this is a little helpful. Again, my recommendation is you might pay a little bit more than uh, if you order it from China or off of eBay. But uh, r and Electronics is pretty reputable. So you may be asking, where do you get an NOVNA? And there's a couple of different options out there. You can go to eBay, Amazon, Alibaba, or um, my favorite, r and Electronics. I'm not sponsored by r and Electronics. I'm not in cahoots with r and Electronics. They're just a U.S.-based dealer that provides excellent customer service, and it's where I choose to buy my NOVNAs. And if anybody was going to ask me where they should get one, I would say there, r and Electronics. And that's going to wrap this video up. I do want to say thanks again for everybody watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again. Until next time. See you later.